Here's a JavaScript function that you've probably never used, but it is pretty useful from time to time. So we have strict equality. You've probably seen this before. So for example, 10 is strictly equal to 10 gives us true. And NAN is strictly equal to NAN is a bit of a quirk. And this is going to give us false. And this has to do with floating point arithmetic, but it's not too important right now. But there's a function that we can use instead that's going to be a little bit different. So let's say console.log and we will do object dot is, and this is going to take in two values. So for example, 10 and 10, let's come down here and I will comment these out and we can see we do get true for this. If say I made this 100, we would however get false. So this works just like strict equality. So for example, if I did the string of 10, we would also get false. But the difference is how it's going to handle two specific cases. The first is going to be in a in. So if I have not a number and not a number, this is actually going to be true. Whereas down here, this was false. And the other difference is going to be with zero. So if we do zero and negative zero, and then we do the same up here, zero and negative zero, we're going to get false up here for object that is. So it's going to say that these are actually different numbers, whereas strict equality says, nope, they're both still just zero. And in every other case, they are going to work the exact same way. So most of the time we do just want to use strict equality, but from time to time, object that is can be a useful sort of tool to have in the toolkit. Here's a super useful JavaScript function for generating strings of dates relative to the current time. So we have this new intl.relative time format object that takes in a locale, in this case English, and an options object. And what we're going to do is use the rtf.format method. And this is going to first of all take in a distance, so how far away we are from the current time, and then a unit. So for example, three days. And when I run this, you can see we have in three days. So it generates this as a string. If I say maybe 30, this is going to be in 30 days. And if I change this from day to say month, it's now going to say in three months. And one cool thing is if this was say one, it's going to say next month. So instead of saying in one month, it's going to say next month. And that actually comes from the numeric auto option. So if I commented this out, you'd see we would have in one month, but I do like generally using this most of the time. We can also use negatives. So we can say last month with negative one or say negative 10 is going to be 10 months ago. Additionally, if we wanted to, we could change the language. So for example, ES is going to be in Spanish, and I can't speak Spanish, but I would assume that says 10 months ago. So this is a great way to one, just make sure that our relative dates are well formatted, but also to make sure they are accessible in a variety of different languages. Math.sign is a super useful JavaScript function that I don't see being used too much. However, it does have one small sort of weird edge case quirk thing that you should be aware of. So math.sign is going to take in some number and it's going to return to us one if that number is positive, and if we make the number negative, it's going to return to us negative one. So that's all it does. Its purpose is to figure out if a number that was passed to it is positive or negative. And of course, we could pass a decimal here. So negative 10.5 is still going to be negative one, and 10.5 is going to be one. However, I said there is a weird edge case, and that's going to be zero. So if we pass in just zero, you're going to get zero. And if you pass in negative zero, you get negative zero. And in a way, this sort of makes sense because what exactly is the sign of zero? And this idea that we do have zero and negative zero as different values is a little bit strange in JavaScript. But at the same time, if you're using math.sign and just doing some equality check versus negative one or one, that can actually cause some issues with zero. So it is just something to be aware of. Here's a pattern that was so common in JavaScript that we actually have a built-in function just for this that can make it a little bit cleaner. So we have this team array with three different people in it, Alice, Bob, and Connor, and each one has some tags. So this one has dev and JS, this one has design, and this one has dev and react. And what we're trying to do is get a list of all of the tags. So we can see we map over the team members and get the tags arrays, and then we flatten that 2D array that we just got into a single array, and it logs out these tags here. But this pattern of doing a map and then flattening the result of that map is so common that we actually have a function instead of map, we're going to do flat map. So flat map works just like what we just saw. So it's the same thing as doing a map and then doing the flat. So I can get rid of this and you'll see we have the same result. Now a caveat to this is one, I think it's very poorly named because it's called flat map, but really it does map and then flat. So just remember the map is first, not the flattening. 
And also, if you have 2D arrays, it's actually not going to flatten any deeper than one depth. So it's doing map and then flat with a depth of one. And as a bit of a bonus, we can actually take this one step further because you might notice that we have some duplicates. We have dev in here two times. So how can we actually remove the duplicates? Well, there's a few different ways to do that, but I actually think the cleanest way to do that is to come down here and actually I'll come down below and we can say const unique tags and this is going to be equal to a new array. What I'm going to do is spread the values of a new set passing in the tags. So a set remember is going to be a data structure where all of the values are unique. So what we're going to do is create the set to remove all of the duplicates and then we're going to spread that inside of an array so that we actually have an array of the values. Let's get rid of the space and we can come down here and say constant log our unique tags. And if I run this, you'll see we now have the unique tags where the duplicate of the second dev has been removed. And people always wonder about efficiency. So one point on that flat map is actually generally going to be slightly more efficient than doing map and then flat, although it's going to be mostly negligible. And sometimes there actually might be a slightly more efficient way to do it than doing flat map. However, in most cases, when we're using JavaScript, we're not that worried about micro performance optimizations, and it tends to be better to just choose the more readable one, which I think flat map tends to be. And similarly with creating the set like this, there might be other ways to do this that are going to be more efficient. So if that's something that matters to you, if you have a very large array, something like that, there might be a better way to do this. But if simply you need a nice concise way to do it, that's going to be nice and readable. I do like this method here. Here's a fun function that was added to JavaScript and it can make working with arrays a little bit easier. So you can see here we have a numbers array and we log out numbers at two, which is going to be 22. So zero, one, two, that's the this value here, then we log out numbers at nums.length minus two. So this is how we can get the value two from the end. So nums.length is the length of this array, minus two is going to be this value, so we do get zero. However, this process of getting values from the end is a little bit ugly. So what we have instead is this function called nums.at. So the array.at, and in this case we had two, and you can see we get the same result. So this just takes in the index. But what's cool is this can take in a negative index. So nums.at negative two is going to be zero. So two from the end. Now it's worth noting that when we count from the beginning, it's zero based indexing, right? So we have zero, one, and then two. So we end up with 22. However, when we count from the end, we can't really do that because we start at zero over here. So zero is this value. So negative one is the last value in the array. And this one is negative two. So it's the same thing as what we had before, nums at length minus two. And this is going to give us that zero value. If say we had negative one here, you'd see we would get 30. If we had negative zero, interestingly, we actually get four. So this is just going to be zero. It's not going to treat it as some negative and give us the last value. And just like the standard array notation, if you do something out of bounds, so say 100, we would get undefined. Same thing with negative 100, we would still get undefined. And now an important note here is that when we're writing code, oftentimes the most important thing is just to make it readable. It's not that important for it to be super concise or anything like that. We just want code that's easy to understand and maintain. And that's a big difference between pro and beginner code, which is something I talk about in depth in this video that you should watch next.